So the first thing you have to do is choose an image. I'm choosing a picture of Jigen Quinn because I like her. And you have to make sure it's a high contrast image. That means that the black and white is really standing out against each other. This is the image I chose. I'm going to save it. See how the along the jaw there it's really really black that's going to make it easier to outline later on so that's why you need a high contrast image. Open up sketchpad and then there's a wee icon that's like a mountain and that's what you do to add a photograph. You want to make it a wee bit bigger just by pinching it. And it's really important that you make sure you have two different layers. So where I added the image is my second layer, so I want to put that on the bottom. And then my favourite brush is the wee pen, you can see the one I've chosen there. I'm just going to start drawing around it now. Make sure the brush you're using is thick enough so it looks substantial. Remember this is the pop out style we're doing, so everything should be kind of thick lines. And I'm doing this with my finger. You can use a stylus if you have one at home, but I don't have one at the moment. Uh, I left it in school actually. So I'm just using my finger and I'm using the iPad, which is a little bit better than your Chromebook. So the lines are a little bit smoother. If you have a tablet, you can use that instead of your Chromebook. You don't have to do it on your Chromebook. Just I know that everybody has a Chromebook. And yeah, you just start drawing around the outlines of everything or where you see dark. So you don't want to do basic outlines like couchiny. You want to draw over any bits that are really, really dark in your picture. And it is quite hard to do with your finger, but as long as your lines are looking bold, oh, my forehead. As long as your lines are looking broad, it, broad, it should be okay. Um, doing the eye remember there's no half tones in this so it's all going to be just black and white there's no half tones so for the eye i'm just going to shade in all of the colored bit and leave out that we highlight um at this point you might want to toggle on and off the image underneath and that's by pressing the little eyeball thing i'm just going to change the size and brush every now and again um so if you toggle on and off the the eye you can see the picture without the background and that kind of makes it easier what i did there now was a wee fill tool so it's like a bucket and you press that button that fills up any space as long as the shape is got no gaps i think i make mistakes later on i'm doing this voiceover after because i can't really draw and talk that well <laughs> uh, you can move around and zoom in as much as you need to so this is the important bit where you have to draw around the dark shadows you see. So this looks unusual but it makes it look good in the end. And I'm going to use the fill button again just to fill in that space. And hopefully my head moves out of the way. And then make sure you choose your pen again and you can change the size as you need to to make smaller areas, do more detail. I just toggle on and off all the time just to see what I'm doing. I'm going to use the fill button just to fix that bit in the nostrils. Make sure to always be drawing on the top layer. So I've made that mistake before, not with this one, but in other times I've made that mistake. That I'm drawing on the, bot on the actual photograph and not on a different layer. You have to draw on a different layer or else you won't be able to toggle on and off. Filling in these spaces when I can. Uh, if anybody has a stylus, these kind of areas are a lot easier to do on a stylus because your finger's kind of fat and it's hard to get round all the wee corners. So, we're doing this as a pop out project like Andy Warhol so you all know who he is at this stage and he always drew people from popular culture that's why pop art was called pop art. I've chosen this celebrity now I know you probably don't know who she is it's Tegan Quinn from Tegan and Sarah a band I really like 
Uh, you can choose any celebrity you want. If you want to do your own face, you can. But um, if you don't want to do your own face, you can just do a celebrity. Um, Tegan Quinn is actually a twin, so Tegan and Sarah are twins. That's why I thought this would be funny to do the repeated image over and over again because it would be a little bit like, um, it would show the twins in a different light. Like the Mala Monroe prints, that's what we're kind of trying to copy. So this is me drawing around the big bit of shadow. I'm just going to fill that in. It's going to be quite blocky. Oops. Yeah, you have to make sure your areas are always closed off. Otherwise, you'll do that. And you can just backspace when you make a mistake. I want to backspace, press the back button. So it's looking like it's coming together. Now, although we're doing this very stylized, this technique of finding the dark shadows actually really helps when it comes to drawing more realistically. So although we're tracing, it's not actually just cheating. Like this is a useful technique to do because you are identifying the dark shadows in an image, which some people really struggle with and you tend to just make it up and put where you think shadows are. Something I always see with you is always doing crazy cheekbones on both sides, even if you don't have those kind of snatched cheekbones. So this technique of tracing over images will help you observe images a lot more and see where you actually need to put the shadows. And after a while of practice of this kind of thing, you just sort of know how to freehand draw anyway. So this is a good technique, even though it might seem like you're just tracing and copying. Also, it always looks quite good, so it's good to build your confidence. Now, the hair took me a wee while to decide how I was going to do it, but I just kind of decided to colour in the main black areas and put wee zigzags where I wanted to add highlight. Because I didn't want to just have a whole black head because she's got nice tones in it. And this is where I'm obviously thinking, oh, yeah. <laughs> this is a good thing about doing stuff digitally, you can just back, you can just undo if you make a big mistake. If you did that when you were painting, you'd be in a bit of trouble. So I'm actually learning how to do work digitally as well at the same time as you. Like a lot of this I've just figured out this week. I generally don't, if I am doing something digitally, I don't use this app. I use like Photoshop and Illustrator which are expensive. So this is just a free one you can use. So that's why I got used to do it on this app. And it's the best one on Chromebook, I think. I think there's probably better free apps on iPads, but it's just for the Chromebooks. I know that everybody in the Highland Council has the Chromebook. So that's why I got used to use um, Sketchbook instead of Procreate or something like that. Um, if you're finding your Chromebook is too laggy, you can even do this on your phone. Now it's obviously a small screen, it won't be as easy to do. But if your touch screen on your Chromebook's just not working, because I know some people doesn't work, you can do it on your phone or any form of tablet. I hate the sound of my voice. I want it to look like a finished picture. I don't like how it's cropped off on the top of my head, so that's why I've just kind of rounded it off a bit. The hair is one of the trickier things to do. I'm going to start this, I'll just do the muff instead. got to remember to keep my head out of it for next time. Uh, with the lips, I kind of went back and forth on ideas of what to do. I was going to add in like the dark shadows just and an outline but that looks really weird so I think I just yeah coloured it all in. And made sure I put out the highlight. It's a bit gothic but I'll do. Oops. Uh, 
if you're using the fill tool make sure it's the full set and you have it on which is just the box by itself and I'm going to add the shadow and hope it doesn't make her look like she's drilling that's okay I meant to insert an image of the final piece and I actually did this before with an image of Twiggy but I was really silly and didn't check the battery on my camera beforehand and it died. So I have a finished version of one of these that I'm going to put at the end of the video. Oops. I'm going to put at the end of the video and it is going to be like one of those Marilyn Monroe um, screen prints Andy Warhol does with all the different background colours. Um, also just finishing off a shoulder because I don't want it to like stop on a block. It might end up changing whenever we add all the bright colours like in the Andy Warhol. This lesson is just doing this outline and I know you have done an outline before similar to this but this is really doing it nice and blocky and picking out all the key shadow and tone shapes. hope you look funny. So I'm just using a smaller brush to kind of add more detail in the hair. Um, yeah, with the hair, I'm just breaking up some of the blocky highlights because it's not actually like that and still make it look like she's got wavy and shiny hair. I think I'm kind of done. Yeah. Way. So yeah, you should have a final piece like this. Remember to go to gallery to save it and then upload it to me. Ta-da!